Welcome to Kids Corner. We're going to have another exciting story from my favorite book and yours, the Bible. And you know, today we're going to learn what Jesus says happens to someone who hears his word and obeys it. We're also going to hear what happens to someone who hears his word but doesn't do what it says. I think you might be very surprised. But first, let's see what Eddie has to say. Well, hello, Eddie. How are you today? Well, I'm glad you ask. You see, I have just been wondering. There's some kids, and I am with them in church. And then I see them on the playground, and whoa, way, whoa. I can't believe what they've been doing. You know, they say things, they bully, they disobey. They are just about as mean as the other kids. You wouldn't know at all that they go to church and they learn about God. I'm thinking, whoa, are they hearing what Eddie's hearing? Well, Eddie, uh, the Lord Jesus, he told a story about people just like that, and he tells us what's going to happen to them. Wow, he does. Well, I wonder what's going to happen to them. You know, they're in church, and then they act like they don't follow God at all. I'm thinking, what in the world is going to be their end? Oh, I'm so glad I came today. I can hardly wait to find out. And you know, Eddie, Eddie's thinking sometimes I'm not as good as I should be either. I hear things and I don't do them. Oh, I'm going to listen up today. Oh, I love everybody out there. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye, everybody. Mwah. Now Jesus had chosen his 12 disciples. He wanted them to be with him wherever he went. He had a lot to teach them. Well, as they traveled with Jesus, they found out that the crowds absolutely loved him. They loved hearing what he had to say. But you know, the Bible tells us that Jesus told them things that were so important. You know, he he didn't tell them, you know, how far the sun was from the moon and uh, what a big problem in multiplication was. He told them how to live their lives. He told them how they were to relate to people, the things that were really important. You know, everybody has people in their lives that they don't like and that doesn't like them. So what do you do? Are you just mean to them? No, he said, you love your enemies. If someone you know doesn't like you, you think, what could I do for them? Do good to those who hate you. And then we're to pray for people. And you know, he also tells us that if we have jealousy in our heart, there's every evil thing. And so we need to recognize it. Don't just say, oh, well, you know what, it's nothing. No, it's jealousy. Get rid of it. And he told them all these important things. But you know, there's a lot of people, and they read their Bibles, and they go to church, and they learn about God, but the Bible tells us that they don't do what God has said. In fact, Jesus says, everyone who hears my word after they've heard my word, they have a choice. They're going to be either like a wise man or a foolish man. And he told them the story about the wise man and the foolish man. Now, you know, this wise man and foolish man, they both built a house. And we're going to learn about the house that they built. But you know, I have the picture of a house right here, and this picture was colored. Can you guess how old the person who colored this picture was? Well, they were very young, weren't they? 
And I think we all started out coloring like this. But you see, this person who colored this, they have not learned to stay within the lines. And they also haven't learned that now, I don't know if you could see this, but this is a leaf. Uh-huh. What color should a leaf be? It shouldn't be orange, should it? It should be green. So they haven't learned things that they need to color. You know, there's lines. You're to color within the lines. Some people are like this. They have never learned the boundaries. They have never learned the rules. They have never learned what they should do. And consequently, their lives look just like this picture. Now, you know, um, you can get older. And your life can still look like this. I have heard people, and especially young kids, say, oh, I don't want to do that. You know what? I don't have to. All right, that's the rule, but it doesn't apply to me. Well, you know what people are thinking about you? This is exactly what they're thinking about you. They're thinking you're acting like a three-year-old. This is exactly what your life shows. And I know people that are old, and people that are old can still say, I want to do it my way, and I'm just going to do what I want, and this is exactly what their life looks like. But people that learn the rules, they learn the colors, they learn to stay within the lines, you know what their life looks like? Aha! It looks like this. Yes, it's beautiful. The colors are what they should be. And you know, God is saying to the people today, you are all building a house. And you're building that house with your attitudes, with your habits, with your actions. And all my words tell you what your attitudes, your actions should be. So, you have a choice. When you hear the word of God, you can be like, or you are like, one of these two men. God says that everyone is either like this man right here, and this man right here, he hears the word of God, yes, he listens, and yes, he goes to church, and oh, he really enjoys it, and of course his friends are there, and he can do all kinds of things, but when he leaves, he doesn't do what he has heard. The Bible says he is like a foolish man. You know, he hears that you should follow after Jesus, but you know what, there's, there's video games out there, and oh, all the pictures on them aren't quite right, and, and then there's, there's movies, and, and the words they say, no, no, Jesus would not approve of those, but, but they're very exciting, and they want to watch it, and, you know, obeying their parents, yeah, but you don't know, their parents are asking them to do things that they don't want to do, and Jesus says, no, those are all wrong, those are not the right attitudes, that's not what you should be doing, and the Bible says it's like the foolish man who hears what God says you should do, but does not do it, or you are like the wise man, and the wise man over here, yes, he hears God's word, but he says, oh, that sounds hard, but I'm going to do it, I'm going to put those practices in my life, do you know, I haven't been telling the truth, I'm going to start making sure that what I say is 100% true. And he starts putting God's word in his life. Now, the Bible says that each of these men, it is like them building a house. Now, when the foolish man builds his house, do you know where he chooses to build his house? Oh, yes, right down there on the ocean, right on the sand. You know, I want life to be fun and exciting, and, you know, I just want it to be full of pleasure and happiness. And, and you know, kids, the sand may look hard when there isn't any water, but it's not going to stand when the water comes. But this is like someone who says, you know what, yeah, but, you know, to a, obey my mom. I mean, sometimes she asks me to do things. I don't care what she asks you to do. If you don't want to do what your mom says, you make an appeal. You get up, you start to do it, and you say, Mother, it isn't my turn. But if she says, well, I would like you to do it anyway, then you continue to do it.
And you know, it's like someone who says, you know what, and they continue lying. Do you know, people think, oh, I'm so, you know, I can get away with this. And yes, I snuck into that movie and my parents didn't know it. And no, do you know what a liar is? A liar is a big coward. A liar is someone who's not a man, who doesn't say, you know what, I did it. I'm going to take the consequences of it. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to own up to my actions. So if you're a liar, you're a coward. You're a fraidy cat is what you are because you are not saying, I can take it. I can, I can stand behind it. And anybody who says that being a Christian is just for sissies, they don't know what being a Christian is. For you to, a bully comes up. You know what you want to do? You want to get back at him. But God says, no, you're kind to them. What if your little brother or sister is annoying you? You know, you want to just say, scram, get out of here. But no, you don't do, this, this man would do that. Scram, I don't want you around. You're bothering me, get lost. But no, he doesn't follow the word of God. But you know, the wise man, aha, uh -huh, he hears God's word and he says, oh, it is hard to obey. No, I feel like playing my computer game, but my mother asked me to do something. And you know what? I don't feel like setting the table, but I'm going to set the table because she asked me to set the table. And, you know, he says, I'm not going to lie anymore. And my homework? No, I would rather play, but no, it's my responsibility to do my homework. I'm going to do it. I am going to be honest. I'm not going to cheat. I, I want something. I'm not going to steal it. I'm going to work hard for it. And so he is like someone who builds a house on a rock. You know, if you built a house on the rock, the Bible says you have to dig down. That takes extra energy. You've got to dig down. Okay, how far do I have to go? And, and then, okay, let's make sure it's smooth. And, and to build your house on a rock. But you know what? God says that if you build your house on the rock, we're going to find out what happens. And we're going to find out what happens if you build it on the sand. And oh, it is not a pretty picture. But in building this house, you know what? Both men have to work. You see, they're, they're laying the stones right here, and, and they're making the door jam up here, and they're building their house. And do you know that from the outside, when these men are finished building their house, you may say, oh, they both look fine to me. Do you know, I have heard people say, well, that man doesn't know the Lord, or they don't know the Lord, but they're much better than somebody that does. Oh, their houses look just great. But, you know, if you would go inside this house, you know what you would find? You might find that there's a lot of anger and you might find there's a lot of people being mean and calling names and fighting. There was a man, and he had written a book, and he had been on talk shows, and he had told people how to raise their children. You know what they find out about him? They found out that he had been beating his own daughter. So, yeah, oh, he looked great on the outside, but you go inside, and it's a complete disaster, and it's a mess. And, you know, this man over here, well, his, his house, I mean, it may not even look that great on the outside. But inside, there's peace and joy, and, and people are kind to one another, and, and they're considerate, and, and they're respectful. And, and, you know, they don't treat their family members like they're, they're nothing. They say, oh, no, please, you're the most important one to me. Here, let me help you. Let me do that for you. And, you know, the Bible tells us so on these houses. Jesus says, this is the wise man. He builds his house on my word. He tries to follow it. He seeks it out. He searches to know what is the right thing to do. This man, oh, it doesn't matter. You know, yeah, I'll go to church. But, you know, when I go home, I just do what I feel like. And, you know, it's too hard to do the right thing. So it, what's it going to matter in the end anyway? Well, the Bible tells us that for every single person on this earth, the Bible said that the rains are going to come. And then there will be the floods. And then the winds will blow. Now, can you do that with me? The rains are going to come down. And the floods are going to come up. And the wind is going to blow. 
That means that on this earth, you will have hard times. You know, times will be hard. When you get to heaven, there'll be no more pain. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more death. But on this earth, you could still have an accident. Someone in your family could get sick, and they could even die. You might lose your job. You might not have enough money. Jesus doesn't promise on this earth everything will be great on the outside. But he does say that I will give you peace in the midst of trials and tribulation. I will give you a strength if your house is built on the rock. Well, you know, we're going to find out, first of all, what happens to the house built on the sand when the rains come down, when the floods come up, when the winds start to blow. In fact, we have a song, and I want you to sing that song about what happened to the foolish man. All right, could you sing it for me right now? That's right. The man who built his house on the sand, it goes splat. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever stood just inside the waves and the waves on the seashore and they, they're on your feet? And if you just stand there after wave after wave comes, what happens to the sand under your feet? It just slowly goes away and you go deeper and deeper, don't you? Now, if you're standing on a rock, though, and the waves come in, you're going to be standing on the same spot. Because you know what? When the water comes on the sand, it just washes it away. And the house, the Bible says, is ruined, and great is the fall of that house. Now, you see this man here in the storm? Where is he? He's outside. He's not protected. When do you need something to protect you? When there's storms. But his house did not stand. And I want to tell you right now, if you are lying and you are being deceitful and you are disobeying your parents and you're being a bully and you think you're getting away with it, you are not going to get away with it. When the storms come, you're going to be found out. When you're being deceitful, people are going to find out that you're not telling the truth. And sometimes, Many people have destroyed their entire lives when they found out that they have been cheating. If you are in school right now and you're cheating and you're not doing your homework and you're not studying, it's going to come time for you to get a job. You're not going to know anything. No one's going to want to hire you. So yeah, for a little bit of time, oh yeah, you had fun. But you know what? For the next 40 and 50 years, you're not going to have a job because you're not going to know how to do anything. And so I want to tell you something. You think you're getting away with it? You're not going to get away with it. And besides, you build habits into your life. Some people think, oh, yes, well, I'll start, I'll start being better. No, you won't. If you get in the habit of lying, it is so hard to break it. And it will ruin your marriage. It will ruin your friends. They won't like you. Your parents won't trust you. People won't want to be around you. They won't want to depend on you. And your house will fall. So if you're doing those things, you better take note. Because God, he says, your house will fall. But you do have a choice. You can be like the wise man who built his house on the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, remember, the Bible says that whether you build your house on the rock or whether you build your house on the sand, the storms are going to come. You know, some people, they have not read God's word. They think, oh, if I follow God, nothing bad will ever happen to me. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say that you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and now there's not going to be one bad thing that happens to you. It doesn't say that in the Bible anywhere. The storms will come to those who believe in the Lord. The Bible says he causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. It comes to both alike. But if you have built your house on the Lord Jesus Christ and you have done his word and 
obeyed his commands and sought to do everything as he would have you do it, kept your life holy and clean, when the rains come and when the floods and when the winds, what is going to happen to your house? There's a song. I want you to sing that for me right now. Well, just like the song said, the man who built his house on the Lord, his house stood. And so there he was in the middle of a storm. But where was he? Aha, uh -huh, yes. He was safe inside his house. Oh, it was stormy outside. But inside he knew that God was working things together for good. He had peace. He had comfort. People were not angry with each other because bad things had happened. They were saying, no, I'm going to help you. We're going to get through this together. And so he had built his house on the Lord. You know, kids, you have a choice. You are like one or the other. You're either listening to God's word and doing it. Oh, it's not easy to do. You have to think about it. You have to change your ways. The Bible says that we're born deceitful and we're born wanting to do the wrong thing we're not born honest and kind and loving and unselfish we have to work at that we have to say no to ourselves and yes to God but if you are doing that and every time we learn something about the Lord you say I'm going to start doing that I'm going to build that into my life I want my character to be a character that reflects God's word, then God says you are building your house on a rock and it is going to stand. And that's just exactly what our verse says. Have you ever played hide and seek? It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Well, when I was growing up, there was someone that we would play hide and seek with. And when we would play it with him, you know that we would just seek him and he had the best places to hide. But we wanted to find him, and so we would look for him with our whole heart. It was my dad, and we didn't want him to hide anywhere that we couldn't find him. I don't care what it took, we would search until we found him. Do you know that there is someone who wants us to seek him with our whole heart? Who do you think that is? Mm-hmm. It's Jesus. That's right. Jesus says, seek me. Search for me, you will find me. Have you ever really searched for the Lord with your whole heart? You know, if you're going to build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you need to seek and find out what he has to say. And you know what? He says in Psalms 119 verse 2, he says that those who seek him are just like the wise men in our story. They're blessed. You know, blessed means more than just being happy. They have discovered that if somebody gets everything they want just to be happy, do you know that they're really not happy? You know what they end up being? They end up being bored. So if you got every single thing you wanted, you'd be bored. And Jesus says, ah, you're not going to be bored. So being blessed is much more than being happy. It's being full of joy, and that's what he wants for you. And it's to be challenged, you know, to have a purpose in life and have meaning and, and use your abilities and accomplish something that's worthwhile. And so the Lord says you can be blessed if you do something. Do you want your life to be challenging, worthwhile, full of joy, good things inside, just like the man in our story, the wise man? Then I think you know what you're supposed to do, don't you? The Bible says that you must keep, you must do, you must, blessed are those who keep his testimonies. Do you know, his testimonies, 
in the Bible, God says, okay, this is how I dealt with that man. And this is, you know, a testimony. This is who I am. This is what I am. This is what I've done. We read that. And you know what? It's really God's word. And so when we read how, what he wants us to do and how he wants us to react, and we say, you know what? I'm going to change my life. I'm going to start doing what God wants. You know, blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. And we learned that today. You are blessed. You have a house that will stand in the storm. Oh, I hope you do this. And so let me show you the motions so you can sing this verse and say it. Now for blessed. For blessed because it does mean happy, full of joy. We're going to put our corners up at the mouth. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies. Yes, sir. I will do it. I will keep what you tell me. So blessed are those who keep his testimonies. Yes, it's the word of God. And who seek him. I'm going to look. I don't care. I'm going to keep looking until I find. Who seek him with their whole heart. And that's found in Psalm 119, verse 2. You know what? If I wanted to find that, I would take my Bible, turn to the center. You turn to the center of your Bible. You find Psalms. That's in the center. Look up chapter 119. Oh, yes. Here's chapter 119. Here's verse number 2. It says, blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. It's right here. That means it's true. If it's in the Bible, it's true. Can you sing and say this and do the motions? Can we do that one more time? Okay, let's do it again. That was great. I'm so glad. We need to keep his testimonies. We need to follow his word. But you know, before you follow his word, the Bible says that we must be his child. We must belong to him. And so we must build our life on the Lord Jesus Christ. He must be our foundation. Now, you know, a lot of people, they really don't know what happens when they die. And they build their life totally on the wrong foundation. You know what some people think? Some people think, well, when life is all over, that's it. X over the end, nothing left. That's the wrong foundation. Do you know what's going to happen two seconds after they die? They're going to find out it is not the end. There is no X, that they are an eternal being. That's what God says. He says, I made you to live forever. And you're going to find out that's going to be exactly what happens to you. Well, you know, there's other people, and they have a wrong foundation, too. Do you know what they think? They think that you just keep coming back again and again and again. They, they think, you know what, you, you live your life, and if you're really good, then you'll come back as something better, and then you, you live your life again, and, and pretty soon you keep living it over and over and over and over and over. You die, you live, you die, you live, and pretty soon you reach the state of being one with God. Do you know what that's called? That's called reincarnation. You come back and have another life, after this life. But you know what the Bible says, and the Bible's true. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. You're not going to keep coming back. You have one life. In this life, you must make the decision. Well, you know, there's other people, and they think, well, you know what? Yes, you should live a nice life, but everybody's going to go to heaven. And so we're all going to go to heaven, and, and so that's just going to be the way it is. Heaven only and everyone is going to make it. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says we are not all going to heaven. The Bible says, in fact, it's just the opposite. We all deserve to be punished because we've sinned. 
I'm not going to be punished for somebody else's sin. I'm going to be punished for my own sin. But you know, the Bible tells us that that's not the way it is. We're not all going to heaven. We're not all going to a place of punishment. No, the Bible says that everybody is either going to heaven or to the place of punishment. Now, God made and created you to live forever in heaven with him. But if you choose to go your own way and you don't want to follow him, then he said, there was a place I prepared for Satan and the angels. And you know what? I, I didn't make you to go there. But if that's what you choose, then that's where I will let you go. You have a choice. You make that decision during your lifetime. And you can go to either heaven or you can go to hell. Well, so the next question is, how does a person go to heaven? Do you know what some people think? Some people think that only good people go to heaven. Well, the truth of the matter is, good people do go to heaven. But the only problem is, God says there is none good, not even one. If I ask you, how many times have you told a lie? You say, whoa, I haven't been 100% truthful with your parents or your friends or the teacher. How many times have you cheated? How many times have you just taken something that wasn't yours? How many times have you thrown a temper tantrum? How many times have you fought with somebody? How many times have you had a bad attitude? How many times have you thought, oh, I hate that person? God says when you hate somebody, that's sin. I'm going to tell you, we know that we're not going to go to heaven, and God says every single person person has sinned and is deserving of punishment. Well, the good news is that Jesus, God's son, he died on the cross. He took our punishment. You know, there's other religions out there that think, oh, you just, you know, reach a state of nirvana. You just think, well, yeah, but you know what? That's not what separates us from God. We're separated from God because we owe a debt of sin. So Jesus says, this is your problem. This is what separates you. This is what I will take. I will solve the problem that's keeping you from heaven. And so the Bible tells us that if we put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, then he saves us. He saves us from the punishment of sin because he has taken it for us. So if I ask you, who goes to heaven? Well, it's not good people because there are no good people. The people in heaven will be the people that Jesus has saved. And you know who he wants to save? The Bible says he is not willing that any should perish. He says, I have come that all, please come, come, all who believe in me, all. I, I want to take your sin and wash you clean, and I want you to come and live in heaven with me. Have you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus and said, Oh, Lord Jesus, I've done things that are wrong. I'm deserving of punishment. Thank you for taking my punishment for me. I put my faith and trust in you. And Lord, thank you that you said, just by trusting and believing in you, that you will save me. Now, I want to tell you this, guys. Once you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, then he says, I want you to follow me. You can't just go out and do whatever you want. That's not really putting your faith and trust. Those are just words. If you really believe that Jesus did this for you and you put your faith, you're going to say, I want to turn my life around. You're going to be like the wise man. I'm going to start doing what he told me to do. I'm going to change my attitude. I'm going to change my actions. I'm going to have the right heart and I'm going to follow him. If you do that, your life will be built on the Lord Jesus Christ and it will stand Firm, both on this earth when the storms come and when you die. The Bible says that you will be taken to heaven to live forever with him. If you've never put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus, do that now. And if you've been learning about God all your life, but you don't take careful thought to how you can do what Jesus said, start doing that. Every time you hear something, have I been obeying? Do I have a bad attitude? Do I get angry and upset? Do I use words that are not respectful and kind to those in my family? Am I telling people off and just being touchy about things? Just say, Lord, I'm not going to be that way anymore. I'm going to follow you. Oh, I hope you do that this week. Oh, you know, God's word, build your life on God's word. I love you. I hope you do that. 
I will see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>